Hello everybody, this is Dr. Leili Hatami. In this video, we're going to cover chapter 3, part 1, cells, the living units, which is regarding the plasma membrane. The first, uh, I'm going to start with the cell theory. There are four concepts regarding the cell theory. The first one says a cell is the structural and functional unit of life. A cell is the structural unit of life because body of all organisms is made up of cells. A cell is the functional unit of life because all the body functions are carried out by cells. The second one says how well the entire organism functions depends on individual and combined activities of all of its cells. Which means the activity of an organism depends on the total activity of independent cells. The third theory, it says, structure and function are complementary. For this theory, let's look at the RBC's structure and function. RBC's or red blood cells are very small, disc-shaped, very flexible cells that do not have a nucleus and organelles, but they are full of hemoglobins. RBC's function is to carry oxygen and also carbon dioxide. They are so flexible because their flexibility, because of their flexibility, um, they can pass through the tiny blood vessels. Their disc shape or biconcave shape increase their surface area so they are able to transport oxygen. So, in this way, the structure and function are complementary. Uh, the fourth and the last cell theory says continuity of life has cellular basis. Which it means cells can arise only from other pre-existing cells. As I mentioned before, the smallest unit of life is the cell. The human bodies are composed of cells. In fact, there are trillions of cells in the human body. The many different kinds of cells compose the body and each type is specialized to perform specific functions. There are over 200 different types of human cells. As you can see in this picture, you can see different shape of cells with different size, with different names. They have different functions. For example, the fibroblasts, the cells we can find in connective tissues. Their job is to produce matrix for connective tissue. Astrocytes, they are very tiny cells in our blood. Their function is to carry oxygen. The epithelial cells, which can be found in epithelial tissues, they can cover the organs. The skeletal muscle cells, look how long they are. Their job is to contract and make movement, or also we have the smooth muscle cells. There are nerve cells or neuron. They are very long actually cells and their job is to gather information and control body functions. There are some other cells as well like fat cells, macrophages, the sperm cell. So the sperm cell or the cell of production, reproduction or male sex cell. This has a tail which allows it to move. So you can see that we have different shape of cells with different structure, different size, different function. Although these cells vary in size, shape and function, they exhibit many structural and functional similarities. All cells have some common structure and functions. The human cells have three basic parts. The plasma membrane, which is the outer boundary, which is going to separate the inside of cells from the outside. 
The nucleus which contains DNA or the genetic material and between the plasma membrane and nucleus there is cytoplasm. or the intracellular fluid containing the organelles. So in this way we can divide the human cells to three basic parts. Plasma membrane, the outer boundary which maintain the boundary, maintain the life, the nucleus which contain the DNA or genetic material and between the nucleus and plasma membrane there is cytoplasm. The cytoplasm contain intracellular fluid and organelles. We can find these three basic parts in most of the cells in our body. Plasma membrane, cytoplasm and nucleus. So on this picture, you can see this plasma membrane, the outer boundary, the nucleus, and the cytoplasm, which contain the intracellular uh, fluid and organelles. In this video, we're going to focus on the plasma membrane structure and function. To understand the plasma membrane function better, let's look at the materials or substances that we can find outside of the cell. Because the plasma membrane job is to separate the inside of the cell from the outside of the cell. The substances found outside of the cells, we call them as extra cellular materials because extra means outside so everything that can be found outside of the cells we call them as extracellular materials the extracellular materials can be like fluid which we call them as extracellular fluid or they can be as cellular secretions or they can be as extracellular matrix. So there are three classes of extracellular material as extracellular fluid, cellular secretions, extracellular matrix. The extracellular fluid or body fluids examples are interstitial fluid. The interstitial fluid are the fluid which can be found between the cells. Blood plasma is the other example of the extracellular fluid, the fluid of the blood. And the cerebrospinal fluid is a fluid surrounding the nervous system organs, is the fluid around the spinal cord and brain. So these three fluid, interstitial fluid, blood plasma and the cerebrospinal fluid are the examples of, of, of our body fluids. The other classes of extracellular materials is cellular secretions. The example of cellular secretions are saliva and mucus. And the other classes of the extracellular materials are extracellular matrix, which is a substance that can act as a glue to hold cell together. Okay. So, in this picture, we're going to focus the fluid that can be found inside of the cell and outside of the cell. If you remember, in just a few uh, slides before, we talked about the cytoplasm which contain the intracellular fluid. Plasma membrane, nucleus, and cytoplasm. Inside of the cytoplasm, we have the intracellular fluid, which is the fluid we have inside of the cell, which it accounts for 67% of our body fluid can be found inside of the cell. And only 33% going to be found outside of the cell or as extracellular fluid. 
So the intracellular fluid can be the fluid find inside of the cell and the extracellular fluid which can be the interstitial fluid, the intravascular fluid or blood plasma and the cerebrospinal fluid. As you can see, most of the fluid in our body is going to be found inside of the cell. And from the extracellular fluid, about 26% going to be found between the cells as our interstitial fluid. 7% going to be found inside of the blood vessels as our blood plasma. And less than 1% going to be cerebrospinal fluid. So in this way, inside of a cell and outside of the cell we have fluid okay let's look at the plasma membrane or our cell membrane the plasma membrane acts as an active barrier separating the intracellular fluid from the extracellular fluid it plays dynamic role in cellular activity by controlling what enters and what leaves the cell. For understanding the function of plasma membrane, let us first look at the structure of plasma membrane. Plasma membrane consists of lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates. Lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates are the molecules can make the plasma membrane. The membrane lipids form a flexible lipid bilayer. And then inside of these membrane, there are specialized membrane proteins flow through these fluid membrane. And then carbohydrates are the molecules can be found outside of the plasma membrane. These surface sugars which form glycocalyx. This is a picture of plasma membrane. You can see these red parts shows the lipid bilayer. This blue color shows the protein and this green color shows the glycocalyx or glyco um, lipid and glycoprotein which gonna be the carbohydrate part of the plasma membrane let's look at the membrane lipids lipid bilayer is made up of 75 percent phospholipids 5 percent glycolipids and 20% cholesterol. Phospholipids are the molecules which consist of two parts. The phosphate part or the phosphate head which is polar or charged and this part is hydrophilic. The hydrophilic, it means it loves water or the water-loving part of the phospholipid molecule. And the other part of these phospholipid molecule, it's a fatty acid tail. It's a nonpolar or no-charged part of the phospholipid. This part is hydrophobic, which means it hates water so the head part is water lover and the tail part is water hater so now we're going to put these molecules between two watery solutions look for example here we have the inside of the cell which is an inside of the cell is water do you remember we had the interstitial fluid or water inside and outside also is going to be found water and now we're going to put this molecule here between two watery solution 
but the problem is that one side loves water and one side hate water and that's the reason we're going to have two layer of these molecules two layer of phospholipid molecules so in this way these water loving gonna be toward the water and the tail part or the water hater part gonna be on the opposite of the water so that's the reason we have two layer of phospholipid in the structure of our plasma membrane. So do not forget our plasma membrane is a lipid bilayer, which the basic part of our membrane lipids are phospholipids. And because of this structure, the one part is water lover and one part is water hater we're gonna have two layer of phospholipid molecules the next uh, membrane lipid is a glycolipid which accounts for five percent of membrane lipids glyco means sugar and glycolipid is a lipid with sugar molecules which can be found on outer membrane surface Let's go back to this picture. You can see the glycolipid. So this is a carbohydrate group which attaches to the lipid. We call this as glycolipid or lipid with carbohydrate attached. The next membrane lipid is cholesterol, which accounts for 20% of membrane lipids. Its job to increase the membrane stability. Let's look at the membrane proteins. So the membrane proteins make about half the mass of plasma membrane. There are two types of membrane proteins, integral proteins and peripheral proteins. The integral proteins are inserted into the lipid bilayer. Some protrude from one membrane phase only, but most are transmembrane proteins that span the entire membrane and protrude on both sides, as you can see in this picture. Their function is uh, they can act as transport proteins, as channels and carriers, so they can make our plasma membrane to be selectively permeable or they can act as enzyme or they can be as receptors or cell to cell connections. The peripheral proteins are the proteins which attach it to the integral proteins. Their function going to be as enzyme or motor proteins for shape change. Glycocalyx. Glycocalyx consists of carbohydrates sticking out of cell surface. They can be glycolipid or glycoproteins. As I mentioned before, glyco means sugar. When we have glycolipid, it means the sugar or carbohydrate attached to lipid and the glycoproteins means carbohydrate attached to the proteins. So we can find them outside of the cell or actually sticking out of cell surface. The every cell type has different pattern of these sugar coding. So glycocalyx, which we can call this as sugar coding as well as the sugar or the uh, sugar chain or the carbohydrate part is going to be out of the cell surface. Their function is um, as a specific biological markers for cell to cell recognition. So every cell in our body, they have this glycocalyx, this specific marker. So in this way, the immune system can recognize self cell versus as non self cells. So do not forget glycocalyx or sugar coding. Uh, they function as a specific biological marker for cell-to-cell -cell recognition.
okay so far we discussed about some cell theories and then about the cell diversity how um, different cells we have in our body and also they are different they're in their size their shape and their function there are some similarity between cells they all can have plasma membrane nucleus and cytoplasm then we discussed about the plasma membrane structure and now the topic is regarding cell junctions. Some cells are free. They are not bound to any other cells. For example, our blood cells, the red blood cells, white blood cells, they are not attached to each other. The sperm cell, they are free cells. They can move and they are not attached to each other. Also, there are some other cells in our body as well, which they are free. But most cells are bound together to form tissues and organs. There are three ways cells can be bound to each other. Through the tight junction, the smosomes, and gap junctions. Let's look at our first junction, tight junction. In tight junction, a series of integral protein molecules in the plasma membrane of adjacent cells fuse together. Then they're going to form an impermeable junction that encircle the whole cell. Let's look at this side, which we can find the tight junction. If we magnify this tight junction, you can see these purple color molecules, which they show the proteins, the integral proteins. This is a plasma membrane of one cell, and this is a plasma membrane of the adjacent cell. So the integral proteins fuse together. So there is no extracellular space or the uh, intercellular space between these two plasma membranes. That's the reason we call this junction as impermeable junction as well because we have a fusion of the plasma membrane at the um, point of the junctions. So it's very important to know the tight junctions function is to prevent fluids and most molecules from moving in between cells. So in this way the fluid and molecule cannot pass through the pass through be, between cells from these tight junctions. For example, tight junctions are going to be found between the epithelial cells lining the digestive tract of intestine. So in this way, they're going to keep digestive enzymes and microorganisms in intestine from seeping into the bloodstream. And also the tight junction is going to be found in some structures like our blood brain barrier. So they're going to make a barrier or in some kind of impermeable junction. So in this way, the toxin cannot pass through the blood to our brain. Next, next junction is the smosome junction. That here you can see the magnification picture of the smosome junction. You can see the plasma membrane of one cell. Let me draw with the red color. And this is the plasma membrane of the adjacent cell. So there is a space between these two plasma membranes which we call this as intercellular space. So they are not fused together like in our tight junction. There is a gap between these two plasma membrane, but there is a protein filaments or linker proteins, which they're going to connect this adjacent plasma membrane. So it looks like a plug or button thickening of adjacent plasma membrane. If you look at the intercellular side of this plaque or the desmosome junction, there are some filaments, the intermediate filament, which we call them as cretin, which are going to attach to this plaque. So here, the cretin filaments attaching to the plaque and the presence of linker proteins between this plasma membrane are some characteristic of the smosome junction. 